All right, drug discovery, part one. Uh, we're going to start with going over the basics, just some of the terms you're going to see with the uh, drug discovery problems. So first of all, we're going to define PL and PL. P is going to be our protein. Uh, this is generally going to be a target enzyme or a target receptor that we want the drug to work on. L is going to be the ligand, and the ligand is going to be the drug that we're actually developing. And then PL is going to be the bound complex. Once the drug binds to the protein, it can act on it. Typically, we're looking at inhibitory effects. We want to inhibit the protein, but you know, we could also want to, you know, stimulate that protein. Okay. So first thing we want to go over some Ks. We have KD, KA, and KI. First thing is KI is the dissociation constant. So it's a measure of how much the protein ligand complex is going to dissociate. So KD is going to be products over reactants. This is still going to be PL divided by PL complex, okay? So KD, it's a measure of how likely you are to dissociate. On the other hand, KA, the association constant, KA is going to be PL divided by the concentration of P times L. Okay, so the higher your KD is, the more likely your, bo your bound complex is to dissociate. The higher your Ka, the less likely your bound complex is to dissociate. One thing that you definitely want to recognize between KD and Ka is that KD, or whoops, KD equals 1 over Ka, okay, and vice versa. Ka equals 1 over Kd, okay, they're inversely related. You can't have both Kd and Ka be high. All right, now Ki, um, typically you're going to see this as a measure of how potent an enzyme is. And what you want to understand is that Ki is the dissociation constant when the enzyme is 50% um, inhibited, okay, and what we mean by inhibited is the enzyme or the protein is 50% bound to our given ligand. So it's a specific concentration of ligand or drug to get 50% inhibition or 50% binding, okay? It follows then that at 50% inhibition, okay? So 50% inhibition, what's going to happen when you have 50% inhibition is the concentration of free protein equals the concentration of bound protein. And what ends up happening from there is your KD is now just going to become a ligand concentration. Because looking back up at this KD, if P equals PL, then this whole fraction is equal to 1, and then KD just equals a specific ligand concentration. Okay? Now, what does this mean conceptually? Okay, well, conceptually speaking, what's going to happen is the higher your Ki is, okay, the higher your Ki is, what that means is you need more ligand in order to get 50% inhibition, okay? If you need more ligand to get 50% uh, inhibition, that means you have a worse binding, okay? Compare that to if you had a low Ki value. So a higher Ki value means worse binding, and the worse binding you are, the less potent your drug will be, or you know, the less potent or less efficient your drug tends to be, okay? Remember, a Ki is just a Kd. It's just a specific, it's based on the Kd. It's a specific concentration to get 50% inhibition, okay? So higher Ki's mean a less potent or efficient drug, okay? Now, delta G calculations, okay? Delta G equations, the general form of delta G really regarding um, delta G versus K is always delta G equals negative RT ln K, okay? KEQ. If we wanted to do disassociation, so the free energy of dissociation, delta GD equals negative RT ln KD, but we could also say that delta GD equals positive RT ln KA. The reason why we can do this is because there's a relationship between KD and KA where KD equals 1 over KA. So if you substitute 1 over KA in for KD and rearrange it using your log rules, the negative becomes positive. 
Okay, we're not really going to look too much at dissociation. What we really want to focus on is the free energy of binding because at the end of the day, we're studying how well does our ligand bind the protein. Okay, so for binding, I'm going to say delta GA because we're talking about association. Delta GA equals negative RT natural log KA. And then this next one we're going to look at is going to be like the most important equation, the real equation that we really want to look at. Delta GA equals positive RTLN KD, okay? Because generally speaking, you're going to get KD values and you're also going to get KI values. And you want to plug in the KI or the KD in and relate this to the free energy released upon binding, which is our delta GA, okay? So this equation right here, very, very important, okay? Make sure you understand this. And of course, also be able to rearrange this equation and solve for a K if you're given a delta G value, okay? And the last equation for delta G we're gonna look at is the binding that happens at room temperature. This is a specific scenario. So our temperature is going to be 25 degrees Celsius, and our temp, or that is 298 Kelvin. The R value is going to be 2 times 10 to the negative 3 kcals per Kelvin times mole. If we're at room temperature and we're dealing with kcals, what we can say is that delta G of association or binding is equal to 1.4 kcals times your log KD, okay, or log KI, okay, it's the same thing, you can use KD or you can use KI, all right, so 1.4 kcals times log KD, log KI, all right, and in terms of units, you want to make sure that this KI, make sure it's in molar, so if they give you something like Ki equals 1 micromolar, make sure to multiply it times 10 to the negative 6, okay? And that about does it for our basic, our basics regarding drug discovery.